Good evening. Welcome to the School of Visual Arts Masters in Digital Photography I3 lecture. It's our pleasure today to welcome Landon Nordeman to our lecture series. Landon studied at the School of Visual Communication at o Ohio University and is currently based here in New York City. American Photography, Communication Arts, Pictures of the Year International, the PDN Photo Annual, the Best of Photojournalism, the Center for Documentary Studies, PDN's 30, the Society for Publication Design, and the James Beard Foundation have all recognized Landon's work. Norman's photographs have been exhibited at the Howard Greenberg Gallery here in New York City, the Ullins Center for Contemporary Art in Beijing, and many other venues. Landon's work is also in the collections of the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston and the Columbus Museum of Art. His editorial client list includes The New Yorker, New York Magazine, Sports Illustrated, ESPN, and Vogue. I would highly recommend that you follow Landon on Instagram at Landon Nordeman because when your pictures come up, I immediately know they're yours because they're full of color, vibrancy, clothes, and they're, they're really um, uplifting and inspiring. So I think we're going to have a wonderful uh, presentation and I want to thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, Katrine. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks, guys. All right, how's, how's that? Well, I'm going to start with the microphone, but maybe, um, maybe I'm going to abandon it because I can feel I'm going to want to walk around and stuff. Um, so I thought that I would show you guys uh, a project that was really the first time that I felt like my own voice as a photographer was coming out. And I was in grad school at the time at Ohio University. And the project uh, was sparked by this class called Magazine. And basically the premise was you had to come up with an idea for a magazine story, pitch it to your classmates and your professors, get them to approve it, talk about how you might approach it, and then take 10 days, go out and shoot it. And uh, I'm originally from New York. I grew up in the city, actually, but I had never been on the Staten Island Ferry. And when I was home over Christmas break, am I talking too loud? Yeah, sorry. Is this better? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I think I'm not We're so much in the in back. Between. Okay, in between, sorry. Um, and I rode the Staten Island Ferry once, and I was just mesmerized. I, I just kind of fell in love with it. And um, just quick show of hands, who here has ridden the Staten Island Ferry? Okay, that's pretty good. So you guys know what I'm talking about. The thing I love about it is that it can be this romantic place to take a date, it can be a daily commute, it can be beautiful at sunset, it can be freezing in the winter, cool in the summer. It's just kind of this incredible little icon of New York City and it's free. So uh, I came back to school. I said, guys, I want to do it on the Staten Island Ferry. And they said, OK. So let's, I'll start showing you the pictures from, from the Staten Island Ferry. And the thing that happened to me uh, during this project, which I feel like I still do, is I use many different approaches to take pictures, which is still something I do. So for example, this is a re reflection. As you can tell, I'm outside. I'm not talking to anyone, I'm just looking through my camera and shooting. Kind of fly on the wall approach. Here I'm standing with other tourists, other people taking pictures. I love to work where there are other photographers working. It's kind of this comfortable space for me where it's like, oh, everyone's taking pictures, so it's okay for you to take pictures too. So I would just ride the ferry back and forth for hours. And I did this over the course of 10 days during late afternoon sun. Here, just looking for natural light falling on this guy's jacket. Or very close to someone with the wind blowing his tie. I love to look for details and things that sort of speak to the fact that it's out there. It's cold and windy, but it's the tie over the shoulder that tells you that it's windy. Occasional graffiti. Now this picture is made on the way to the ferry terminal and it's something that's very important for me also today 
the ferry terminal is in the back there, and I'm just walking to get there, and I see this guy leaning by the bus stop just selling um, cotton candy. But it's this idea that the picture can be anywhere, and I believe this in like, I mean deeply, deep, deep inside. I just believe that the picture is anywhere. So whatever your project is, you could walk out your front door and the picture could be on the sidewalk right in front of you. So in this case, I wasn't even at the ferry yet, but to me this was you know, the best photograph of the day. It happened before I even got on the boat. So I still think about that as I'm shooting any project, any assignment. So um, this guy with the red pants uh, is also interesting because I just ride the boat back and forth and I love this idea of being in kind of a, the guidelines were set. This was not a project about New York City transportation or, you know, ferries around the world. It was just the Staten Island Ferry. And so I feel like, it, for me, I love projects or assignments photographs that kind of are in like a, a contained subject, in this case, physically contained on the ferry. And it also taught me just to watch. So I saw this guy go from Staten Island to New York at around 9 o'clock on a Saturday night, but I couldn't quite get into the position to photograph him. I saw his red pants and, you know, he just looked like a kind of a character to me, and I'm drawn to characters. But this is at 3 o'clock in the morning on the way back to Staten Island. He had been all night out in the city partying with friends and now he was kind of drunk and he was kicking his feet up and, and lying on the on the seats and so to me this was this is this is a picture so I, I went over to him I said hey you know I, I love your pants you mind if I take your picture he says sure and that's how that that photograph came to be but this idea of uh, finding color and um, Color against color is something that I'm, I'm always looking for. This is Monday morning commute. You can just tell by the mood on the ferry. People are just kind of, you know, they're on their way to work. You get that fluorescent lighting. It's very different feeling. Then, you know, on a weekend afternoon, you get a young couple like this. Now this, this was, I only saw this once. Um, this was in the men's room of only one boat. And I'm kind of surprised that I haven't seen more of these in New York. Can you guys tell that it's Osama bin Laden's face in, in the urinal? I'm just surprised that these things didn't really kind of take off. But anyway. So uh, one thing I mentioned was this idea of an approach. Sometimes I'd go up to people, introduce myself, hey, can I take your picture? Like with this gentleman, he just said yes, and so I did. And other times I would be kind of standing back. In this case, I'm watching people get off the boat. Another re reflection through, through some doors. And this, this was a woman who was waiting in, on the Manhattan side. So that's the Staten Island Ferry Project. In a way, it's not the sort of description of how the ferry works. It's like my own little poem about the Staten Island Ferry. These are the moments that, to me, tell the story of what it's like to be on the Staten Island Ferry. So that close collection of moments is kind of like this idea of the lyrical photo essay if you want to call it something. I feel like, in a way, that is what I'm still doing today. And this is, this is back in 2001. This is all film, by the way, slide film. So, OK, Staten Island Ferry. Any questions on Staten Island Ferry? Feel free, guys, really. What, it's, size, what it's, size film did you use? It, it's all 35 millimeters. Sorry, I should have said that. All 35 millimeter, and I only use one lens, always, 35 millimeter lens, that's it. When you have a fixed lens, it forces you to move your feet. So if you want to get close to someone, you have to actually get close to someone. And that's kind of my favorite thing about it, and I still use that today. Anybody else? Okay, this next project is, is called Canine Kingdom. And uh, 
uh, I've worked on this for, for several years, and in a way, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of always going to be working on it. Um, but this started as an assignment. Um, I was assigned to photograph one woman and her dog as they competed at the Westminster Dog Show here at Madison Square Garden. You guys know about Westminster Dog Show? Okay, you've seen the movie and all that stuff. Um, so I, I had never been, and uh, anyway, I, I did the assignment. I followed the, the woman with her dog, but her dog didn't actually do that well. So when I was done with them, I had a credential now, and I would go back into Madison Square Garden and basically I just went crazy. I just fell in love with this, uh, with this kind of dog show world. And, um, and this picture happened on that very first day. And it's also a, a, a picture that, that I want to talk about because I was down uh, on the ground, 35 millimeter lens, nice and close, where, where I like to be. And I saw this dog yawn. And you know when a dog yawns, it really, you know, opens its mouth. So I saw it, and I saw the other dog in the back. But I only saw it. I didn't actually photograph it. But I've learned over the years that if you wait and are patient, when stuff like this happens, it happens again. And it's also something when you're watching people, too. If you watch someone do something with their hand or with the gesture or something like that, if you be patient and watch them, they'll do it again. So the dog yawned again, and this time I took the picture. So, um, yeah, I, I hope this kind of thing is helpful, but I, I, I feel like sometimes it's, at least it's been helpful for me to know kind of like how a photographer took a picture, you know what I mean? Anyway, this is one of those for me. And the, the, the other point here is that um, having the credential you know, I could have just said, all right, I'm going to go to the coffee shop and just wait until the lady who was due back in the ring. But I didn't. I went back there and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and really came away with this whole sort of portfolio just from this assignment, even though it had nothing to do with the lady with the dog. And, um, and anyway, that, that, uh, this ended up being a, a, a body of work that... Um, that just people started to kind of identify we, me with, and, and I, I kind of became known for this body of work. So what happened is, you know, Westminster is the most prestigious show, but I started, as I started getting into this, I started learning about other dog-related events like fashion shows and, and other shows, and I've even been to Bucharest, Romania, to the World Dog Show. I've been to the World Dog Show in Paris. The biggest one is in Krups. I mean, I've kind of gone around, gone around the world chasing this scene. And the, the, the thing is that people always ask me when I get there, they say, what kind of dog do you have? Because people, <laughs> these people love dogs. And like, that's cool. Um, but I don't, I don't have a dog. And when I <laughs> explain to them that I'm just there to take pictures, they think, man, you are really crazy. Um, this, this is like just the perfect thing to me when I learned about this. This was a dog art uh, exhibition at an auction house on the Sunday before the Westminster Dog Show. And so I just kind of, you know, as I learned about these things, I would... I would, I'd go to them, and uh, yeah. Um, and then the other thing with the dog show world is it, it definitely has its own sort of fashion sense. <laughs> you know, I was talking about the guy with the red pants. I mean, the, the, um, the suits that the, that the handlers uh, wear, um, it's also something I've kind of just fallen in love with, purely from a photographic standpoint. Um, okay, here's another picture I want to talk about that's, that's important. Okay, so you can see all these photographers, right? So this is the best in show dog. This is like the most important dog in the world at this moment because he's just been crowned best in show at Westminster. And they let the house photographer take a picture and then they let this rope drop and every single press photographer you can imagine literally runs right up to the stage to photograph the best in show dog. Okay, but where am I? I run all the way around to the other side and I am literally, I'm the only one there 
photograph in the other direction. The reason I'm doing that is because I have this deep belief that this dog is going to turn around and face me and I'm going to make this picture. And the reason that I believe it is because we're dealing with a dog and a dog is unpredictable. Okay? Even though everyone's shouting at the dog, you know, here, 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 the dog turns back to me and that is my picture. So this is one of those, um, and I mean, there are some serious photojournalists in, in, in the back here, and, uh, and this just always kind of makes me laugh. And, and a couple of my friends are back there, and I, I wish, I couldn't find it, I was looking for it, to see the picture of me taking this picture, because I'm like the one photographer behind the dog. But the point is, is that, um, as I said before, I like being in that group mentality when everyone's taking pictures. It's a comfortable place to work. At the same time, when all the photographers go one direction, it's almost like a cue for me to go in the completely other direction. And in this case, all the other photographers are what make the picture. Um, the other thing that, that I found about this is that, like almost any subject, you can just pick a subject. The, the, the more you kind of dig into it and start getting into it and meeting people and, oh, if you're doing that, oh, you should go to this, you should go to that, it just, it ends up being a serious rabbit hole. Um, this is Paris, World, World Dog Show. The World Dog Show is held at different cities around Europe. Um, and you can also see here I'm starting to use a little bit of flash, which is kind of coming into my kind of bag of tricks. We're gonna, we're, we can talk about that a little bit later. So she, she claimed that the paw print on her shoulder, even though it looks so sort of simple, was actually the paw print from that dog. <laughs> this is a uh, breeder's house uh, apartment in Manhattan where she breeds these dogs. She has a big party. And then this was just by accident on Fifth Avenue. This is during um, the week of the dog show. I just happened upon this on a store in, in Fifth Avenue. This is a, this was like a dog carrier event at Saks Fifth Avenue. <coughs> This is also World Dog Show Paris. These are hounds. So that's Canine Kingdom. Any 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 questions about Canine Kingdom? Did you have to have a, a press pass, or did, were you part of a media outlet that actually <coughs> let you get access to these places? Yeah, for the, the sorry, yes. The, the question is, did I have a press pass? Or, or a media outlet? And the answer is yes. And this is something um, that uh, I, I always try and get someone to basically just get you in. So when I first did it, as I explained at Westminster, it was for that newspaper. Then when I wanted to go back, I would basically pitch it to photo editors, just like I had done in that class in grad school, pitching the idea of the Staten Island Ferry. And I would say to them, listen, I want to cover the dog show. Are you interested? And um, as I build up some relationships with editors, uh, even if they kind of knew they weren't going to publish it, or if they knew that maybe it would just be online, it was like they would just do me that favor of filling out the form or sending the, the email that said, you know, Landon Nordman is on assignment for us. Um, and I feel like today that is something that you guys have a huge advantage because Everyone needs online content. I mean, the thing I did for Romania was for Instagram only. It was for the New Yorker's Instagram feed. I just pitched it to them, and they said, yeah, great. I mean, who doesn't want a photographer to do a, a neat project for a week on, on Instagram or to give them a slideshow at the end and put it on their website? So yeah, that's a good question. Should we keep, keep going? Okay, we're going to go from dogs to cats. Now, this is, <laughs> this is not easy for me because um, uh, l let, me, let, me, let me think of the sequence of events here. Okay, I got an email from a photo editor at Vogue. Now, 
you know, that was a, I, I was stunned when I saw that and thrilled, but, but stunned. And then in the email, it basically said, you know, hi Landon, love your work. Um, how do you like to go to the World Cat Championships for us and do a reportage? <laughs> so I was thrilled, right? But I was also extremely nervous because I'm allergic to cats, <laughs> which obviously I wasn't going to tell Vogue. But um, so I started asking friends, and I had to go see an allergist. And I basically told the allergist the same thing I'm telling you guys, which is like, look, pal, I'm a freelance photographer. I just got my first assignment for Vogue. I'm going to spend 48 hours surrounded by hundreds of cats. I'm allergic. Is there anything you can do? And of course, he said, "I understand your problem. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure. You know, make sure you're you're going to be fine." So he gave me these. I mean, I was taking steroids for days. He gave me, you know, powerful, <laughs> powerful stuff. <laughs> but it worked. It worked, and I was fine, and thrilled. Okay, let's do this first picture too. Garfield. Uh, this is in like the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. I walk into this auditorium and the PR person, like my one contact at the Cat Fanciers Association, who was thrilled that Vogue was actually coming to cover it, led me into this room and said, you can get ready in here. So you know, I put the stuff down and turn around and there's a, a grown woman getting into a Garfield costume. So here's my first picture, right? I start photographing her. I'm thrilled. I think this is going to be so funny. It's the woman sticking her head out of the Garfield costume. But almost when she was done, she said, you know, by the way, you can't really publish any of these pictures you're taking of me in the Garfield costume. It's a contractual thing. It, you know, if any kid sees Garfield without his head on, you know, it's, it's going to be a real problem. <laughs> And so when anyone says that to me, I'm, I'm just, I'm a respectful person. I just say, oh, well, okay, I won't do that. I'm not going to turn around and do it. So the picture I thought was the picture was now kind of gone. But I, I left the room before she came out, and this ended up being the picture. This is the woman's mother who was kind of opening the door for her because it was hard for her to see once she had the head on. So... It's kind of like that idea of, uh, no pun intended, if one door closes, another one opens. But this is how I, I really feel about photography. Um, it is just this deep, deep belief that, like, okay, if, if one picture doesn't happen, then you're going to, you just move forward until the next one does. And in, in a way, this picture, which I couldn't even imagine, was better than the picture that I thought was the picture, which was her head sticking out of the suit. Following me? Okay. Um, so the thing about, about cat shows um, is that the cats actually spend most of their time in a little cage. Everyone brings their cat in a little cage. You can't just have cats running around. <laughs> <laughs> so the cats spend most of the time in the cage, and then they're taken out, and very quickly the owners take them over and put them in another cage which is the cage by the judge, and then the judge takes them out. Okay, could anyone tell me what's happening in this picture? Cat escaped. Cat, cat escaped. Lost, lost cat. So again, you know, this is like, my, my, my background really, I mean, I, I'm not calling this a, a great example of photojournalism, but it is a response to what is going on around you. That's the way I work. I'm not going in there thinking, oh, I know what this picture is going to be. When I see people running after a cat, I run with them. And to me, this is part of telling the story of what happens at the cat show. You've got to keep the cats in the cages or else. Anyway. Um, but, the, but the cats were, were amazing, and, 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 and the people were, were very cool to, to be photographed. And in, in, in this project, um, when, when I found out that it was going to be at this kind of gymnasium type place in, in Philadelphia, um, I, I decided to bring an assistant with me who's actually carrying a second flash. And I, I don't know how much you guys want to talk about technical stuff today. We can do it and I'll answer any, any of your questions. But um, it was the type of project where 
I, I wanted to have my own flash, but also an additional flash from my assistant just to help really isolate the, the uh, subjects. So this is a judge, and what the judge does is sort of pick the cat up and explain, oh, this is a beautiful coat, and look at this face, and you know, here's why I love this cat, and they're really into it. Um, and, and the other thing I, I just might say that I have found out about myself, I never sort of set out to be a photographer that does this, but it kind of is me and it is what I do, is I just love to be around places where people are celebrating something. First it was the dog show, now it's cats. It doesn't have to be just animals. You, you'll see in a few other projects. Um, but I, I love the kind of human um, act of celebration and appreciation and this idea that people come together to celebrate something. And the thing that I, I think is sort of funny sometimes is, in fact, that's what we're all doing here tonight. We all love photography, right? So this is our version of the cat show. If you brought a cat person in here and said, wait a second, you guys sit in a room and talk about pictures that were taken like a year ago? I mean, that just sounds to them super boring. But what I'm saying is that you know, people love whatever they love, and I just like to be in the middle of it. So this judge is, is actually, he's not throwing the cat, but <laughs> it sort of looks like, like, like he is. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm relentless, okay? I want to be in the hotel room with the owner and the cat and the, you know, fancy feast and the room service and all that stuff. So when I'm on projects like this, I just keep talking to people and keep asking questions and you know I, I, I got a room in the hotel where all the cat people were staying so I could be you know really dig in and um, it's funny I've been in a lot of ho hotel rooms <laughs> with dogs or in this case uh, cats and I once asked people if I could photograph them waking up with their dogs they said sure it's like to me, all I'm basically saying to them is I appreciate you. I love what you do so much that I just want to get as close to it as I can. And when you let someone know that, I'm, I've been very fortunate that the response is always, uh, okay, cool. So, and then there's always a, there's always a fashion element. These are some of the uh, tools. more more fashion there's always yeah there's just there's always like a, a fashion thing cleaning cages cat furniture I mean these things always just yeah they go deep this is judging the other thing is there are a lot of awards given out at these things it's not like there's just one cat it's almost like almost every cat kind of gets a little bit of a ribbon. It's a very sort of uplifting experience for the, for the crowd. They get to, you know, take their cat to a show and it got a ribbon. It makes them feel good. <laughs> this is cat head. Okay. Any questions on the, the World Cat Championships? All, all 35 millimeter? this time with an assistant holding the off-camera flash, and it was published on Vogue.com. Tim. So, um, <coughs> did you know what this space looked like before you got there? Because obviously that's a tough space to shoot because there's so much vast, dead, ugly wall. Yeah. Which you handled well by dropping you know, the shutter, so that kind of is, you know, people are in the, the foreground mostly, and that kind of goes. Did you know what it looked like, or were you kind of shocked when you got there and you had to work it out? Um, the, okay. Do you guys understand what the what the question is? Uh, yeah, s you. Yes. So, so the the question is about did I know what the environment that I was going to be shooting in looked like, and um, and the answer is I had seen, as I recall, on like by googling the location, a picture of it from the outside. And from the outside, I could tell that this was a dumpy, dirty, like, oh, I wish I could remember the name of it. It was just really a, it wasn't like a convention center. It was just, um, it wasn't an auditorium. It, it, it was like a high school gym, but like a high school gym from like 1972. I mean, it was just, you know, 
so the point is, I didn't know exactly, but with this lighting setup, I do know that you can kind of eliminate the background no matter where you are. Um, so uh, did I answer your question? I guess the point is I kind of had a hunch. When I got there, I was like, oh my god, this is even worse than I thought. Let's put it that way. But did that answer it? Yeah, yeah, that was a good answer. It's a tough, tough space to shoot in. So I was wondering yeah. if you were shocked or you kind of knew that going into it. Well, I guess I, I knew it was going to be kind of tough. I mean, I did bring the other assistant all, you know, from New York. And yeah, I mean, you can even see him back here. This is really not the best. This is kind of loose. You can just tell it just, it just starts to get really, do you guys understand kind of what he's asking? It's like, you know, when you're sh working in a place like this, it can get so busy and just like distracting that you can't tell like, w what are you looking at? And um, this is also something that I, I sort of feel like yeah, it's like, it's just rows of people with these little cat cages and stuff. It's just, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know you say you shot it on 35. Do you mean 35 millimeter film? This, or is, di this is digital. This is digital, so with 35 millimeter lens. Okay, yep. yeah, I just wanted to make sure. No problem. Sorry, I should have said that. Everything else you're going to see is digital. I basically switched to digital in 2004. But I'm old enough that I spent a lot of years in dark rooms, and I know how to do all that stuff. I'm, yep. Okay. Okay, can I just, I, I need to sort of finish the cat story because like six months later, I got the exact same email from Vanity Fair. I swear to God, first assignment for Vanity Fair. This is the cat show at the Algonquin. I went back to the same doctor. I was like, Doc. <laughs> Vanity Fair, first assignment. Can you can you hook me up? He's like, no problem. <laughs> also, I have to show this picture because I think this is honestly the funniest T-shirt that I've ever seen in my life ever. <laughs> I know it's not the best picture, and that pictures really shouldn't be about words and signs. Pictures should transcend language. They should not be you know, relying on a funny t-shirt to make you laugh, but I just, I mean, I wanted to take this guy home with me. I think it's the funniest t-shirt in the world. Okay, so this is the cat show at the Algonquin. It's a little more focused and it's not like an official thing. It's just kind of a silly thing with costumes and stuff like this. Okay. Can we talk about this one for a second? Because this goes into my photojournalistic never give up. I will photograph for as long as I can on any project, almost always to the point where it's like, if I was photographing this lecture, I would wait until every single person had left and then I would get a picture of the empty room at the end just to be like the closer. This is my closer from the cat show. Everyone's leaving and they're carrying their cats out in cages because that's how cats are carried, right? In cages, except for this woman. This woman has her cat on a leash in New York City. Have you ever seen that? You have, okay. Did you get a picture of it? That's okay. The first thing is to see it. The second thing is to get the picture. That's another thing we can, we can talk about. Oh wait, we already talked about that with the dog and the yawn, okay. So I say, oh, where, where are you going? She's like, well, I, I live a few blocks away, so we're just gonna walk home. Oh, do you mind if I take some pictures of you as you walk home? No, I don't mind. So that's that picture. And, and it, you know, actually, a lot of these pictures were just super boring, but at this moment, the cat like sort of saw something and it kind of tensed back up on the leash. I don't know if you can, you can see that a little bit, but that was the shot. Any more cat questions? Okay, Iowa State Fair. So as I was saying, now you guys, I kind of, I'm known for this kind of work. Are you, are, are you kind of getting a sense? People call me up and they send me to places where there's an event going on where people are gathering to celebrate something. And in this instance, it's politics. And this is really my first time covering politics. But I'm not really covering politics. I'm doing Landon Nordman's version of politics, okay? Um, can I say one more thing here that I forgot to mention earlier? You guys know the photographer Bruce Gilden? Okay, L you should look up Bruce Gilden because I love Bruce's pictures, but I went to a lecture that Bruce Gilden gave once and he said something to me that I'll never forget and it was really important. 
he said that when he was starting out, he always wanted to be Henri Cartier-Bresson. And it wasn't until he realized that if he kept trying to be Henri Cartier-Bresson, he would always be second best. Why? Because there's only one Henri Cartier-Bresson. And at the moment that he realized that, and realized that he had to be the best Bruce Gilden that he could be, his work really started to improve. And he started to determine who he was and find his own voice. And this might sound corny or like a cliche, be the best you can be, but it's really true. And I just want to make sure that like, if there's one thing you guys come away with, that, that's the cool thing about photography is that you know, we all see it in our own way. And in the beginning when you're starting out, it's cool to say, oh, I want to try and take a picture like this person or this person. But where, where it really starts to mean something is when you see who, who you are. Okay, sorry, had to get that in. Back to the Iowa State Fair. So politics, and it's basically, it's the same thing, except it's also a state fair. So for me, <laughs> this ended up being this kind of mishmash of like politicians. That was Trump, right? You guys knew that was Trump, right? Okay. And this is like the 900 pound champion pig, which <laughs> is pretty cool to see like its body, but I want to get close and kind of make you wonder what's going on. I mean, look at those eyelashes. I forget this pig's name. I, w I w wish I knew it. Okay, and I also talked about this idea of like different approaches where it's photojournalistic or it's, hey, can I take your picture? This is, hey, can I take your picture? Because this young woman in the middle of the Iowa State Fair, I mean, I was just like, where, where did you come from? Who, who dropped you here? She's from Sudan. Um, she lives in Iowa. And she just came walking down the road at the Iowa State Fair around all these like very kind of hillbilly, you know, types. And here was this beautiful African-American girl. I was just like, wh wh what are you doing here? Come here, I need to take your picture. She said, fine. So it's a portrait. Also, I love the, um, the pearl earring. You guys know that painting, the girl with the pearl earring? She's my girl with the pearl earring, okay? I forget her name right now, but she was cool at the Iowa State Fair. Just a quick question. Can yeah. you center a light or flash? This is with a flash. One flash. So now my thing is always 35 millimeter lens and one flash. And it's always off camera and it's in my hand and I just put it where I want to put it. These twins, I gave them my card. You have to be careful with kids and I have kids now so I understand. Talk to the parents. I'm working for CNN. Here's my badge. Like two weeks later, I got a call from the CNN legal team, and they were like, uh, Landon, uh, we got a woman in Iowa who uh, wants to make sure you're not a child molester. She said she photographed your, your, her daughters. and the That's Iowa, okay? We're in New York. <laughs> anyway, that was the first time that ever happened. Landon. Yes. Do you get releases in those cases? N no, no. I, I, I don't have time for, for a release. And you know what's funny is that when you talk to the CNN photo editor, on the phone, they're like, okay, great. And if you can get releases for everyone, that'll be great. I mean, you, it, it's, no. I mean, uh, I've been on like commercial projects where you have to get a release, but that's a, that's a different thing. But this is editorial and um, I spoke to them. I wrote down the mom's name and got her phone number and gave her my card. I mean, I practically showed her my driver's license. And, um, and I'm always very upfront about that. So the, the, the question was, did I get a release? The answer is no. Um, but you still get published. It was published on CNN.com. Like at the ferry that you don't even talk to them, you can still publish them. Yes, I mean, I'm not a legal expert, but I'm under the impression that if you're in public and you're photographed in a public place, you know, it's okay. It also has to do with usage. Now, if, if he was how you buy this blue makeup, you use it for a commercial, then you're, it's a completely different way. But this is editorial. That's so true. And I'm not a legal a expert show. either. Right. We, we, we can talk more about it. So I guess the point is what happened to me is that the Iowa State Fair became this weird kind of mashup of animals and the culture and the politics and I think even the sort of architecture of the place. Um, and in a way, 
I mean, this is what's so kind of amazing about it. You get right up there with the politicians. This is Jeb Bush drinking a beer. It's kind of like, I, I couldn't even believe he was actually doing this in front of like 40 photographers, of which I am one. And here's the champion mule who, when I went to take her picture, I swear she just looked me dead in the eye. You know, it's kind of like a, like a woman looking over her shoulder. This is like the CNN video guy. I mean, it is, it's hot, it's Iowa in the summer. It's just this kind of um, really crazy experience. But, but again, I, I loved it. And you could tell that I was really going crazy when I started photographing a fly on the back of Jeb Bush's shirt, okay? <laughs> But I, I put this picture in here to show you guys that like this is the level of like intensity and focus that I get when I'm on one of these projects because I start thinking this could be interesting because it is Jeb Bush's shirt and no flies on me and I don't know. So I'm just saying like, you know, push your photography to that level. You can pull it back and an editor will help you pull it back. And in the end, this picture was not on CNN, but I put it in here to just show you guys that like, when I'm out there, I, I kind of, you know, there's Jeb. That was published. That was not published. But that's also, I'm just sticking with him until the very end. Literally, he's about to walk out the door and hop into an SUV with a bunch of, you know, bodyguards and stuff. But before he did, someone asked him a question, and he just took this moment to sort of pause and think about it. You can just tell how like haggard and tired and sweaty he was. <laughs> um, yeah, there's this. This is a sport where like you fire guns at balloons. I mean, I was just I was really. Uh, it was a real cultural experience, but amazing. I just I just love being there. These guys are getting ready to determine who's going to be the, um, like the queen of the fair. There's a lot of girls walking around with ribbons on for different reasons, like the pork queen and the cow queen and stuff. But then there's one kind of cowgirl queen. Here's just another portrait. She was getting ready for to compete in that. And then this is another family getting ready. Again, I'm just introducing myself. Hey, can I take pictures of you guys? Okay, the guy in the center, he's the uh, George Washington sort of impersonator. I mean, he, he goes around to political things and tries to raise awareness for politics and stuff. He was great. And actually, one really funny sort of story here is that, so I tag along with him for a while. Again, you guys, like, I don't just take this guy's picture and say thanks. I say, can I go with you guys for a little bit? Yeah, sure. I mean, I was with him for hours. I've got hundreds of pictures of this guy. And the one I'm showing you is the one that I think is the best. I mean, there are some other close ones. This is not like an editing workshop. But I, I just want to make it clear that like, you know, he's not just walking by me and like, I'm just doing a one-off. I even went with him to a baseball game later that day, the Cubs minor league team, because he was one of the people throwing out the first pitch. And I thought it was going to be just him. It turns out they had like eight people who were throwing out the first pitch. But anyway, you get the point. It's like um, I once heard a photographer say that when you have the subject in front of you, it's like a dog with a bone in its teeth. You never let it go until you think you've got the picture. And in my case, I don't let it go until like, like, like I literally can't go anymore because I never kind of have this idea of like, oh, I got the picture. I'm good. I always just go until I, okay, you guys get the point. That's Iowa State Fair. Any questions about Iowa State Fair? Yeah, I have a, a quick question. Yeah. So if you, CNN sent you, are you, what are you giving them? Are you giving them everything or are you doing like a, a select? Okay, do I need to repeat that one? I don't think no. so. No, okay. Um, okay, that, that, that's a great question. They sent me, and in this case, the agenda was very wide open. It was just do your thing and I send them selects. I was there for three days. I think I sent a select at the end of each day. Um, their edit is kind of similar to what I just showed you. And it was an online slideshow called Postcards from the Iowa State Fair. 
in a way, that's kind of like my dream assignment. That's what I always want to do is just do kind of postcards from anywhere. It's just very open to interpretation. It lets you do portraits, reportage. It's just kind of like go to something and see what you see. Okay, how are you guys doing, all right? Should we do 10 more minutes of like some fashion pictures? Yep. And then we'll do some questions. Okay. So <clears throat> what happened a couple years ago is a, a smart photo editor at New York Magazine saw my dog pictures. And they were smart enough to know, oh, if this guy can do these pictures at the dog show, he'd be perfect for fashion week. And my love and hate for Fashion Week was born, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm kind of in, in deep with this, but, but I do love it. Can we talk about this picture for one second? Okay, this is before the fashion show. This is during the rehearsal. And what happens every time there's a fashion show, usually which they don't let you in for, is they do a little rehearsal where basically the models walk and they practice walking and make sure they know where to turn and all that stuff. And oftentimes, no one sees that. I always want to see that. I kick and scream at the front door where there's all the other photographers are waiting. And I kick and scream and shake hands and, oh, don't, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 I'm supposed to be, yeah, no, I know, but I'm supposed to, you know, and try and get in there to see something like this, to make a picture like this. Because once they open the door and let all the photographers in and all the other people, all those seats are gonna be filled and you're not gonna see this until it's the actual show, which means you're not gonna really see the Eiffel Tower. It's, but the point is, is that um, it's like that picture of the Staten Island Ferry, the guy selling cotton candy. It's before the show. It's during the rehearsal. These aren't even like the clothes. They're starting to do the makeup and stuff. But it's these things that I am always trying to make pictures in. The before, the after, with the cat coming down the street, even though what you're assigned to do is just photograph the, the show itself. Does that make sense? Am I beating a dead horse? Sorry. It's really important to me. When you're a photographer, you're always looking. And you gotta know, or I guess you kind of learn through experience where those opportunities are where maybe you're gonna find something good. The rehearsal is one of them. I photographed the entire rehearsal like this, probably 20 minutes, not 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, of girls just walking back and forth. And I know that I need the Eiffel Tower and I'm just trying to, okay. So Fashion Week, it's, it's, a, it's a dog show. It's the same thing, people, you know, people, crowd around and, and um, celebrate what designers are, are making. And there's just so, so much sort of, um, so many juxtapositions and, and things bucking up uh, against each other and, and, and I love it. Um, one, one thing I thought I might talk about a little bit um, is kind of how Instagram is uh, affecting the way I work. That's kind of a, I thought of that question. I thought people might ask that question. And this is kind of a good one to maybe bring up because this whole idea of flashback Friday, you guys know about that, right? Hashtag FBF. So my interpretation of that is flash period, back period, Friday period. So on Fridays, I will post on my feed a picture like this that was taken with a flash of a person's back. <laughs> okay, and it's kind of become a thing for me. And the funny thing about it is that it's purely coming from Instagram. I think I've always kind of photographed people's backs, but uh, it's kind of like finally given me a place to actually put it out into the world. And this is just one that... Um, it is particularly sort of successful at achieving that idea of the flash from the back because she's wearing the, you know, fur coat, diamond bracelet, yet her phone is, you know, totally beat up. So anyway, since Flashback Friday, this is also a Flashback Friday contender. But the point is, is that um, it's gotten me, it's kind of excited me and, 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 almost made me feel like I 
every time I'm out, like I need to do something that is a sort of flashback picture. This is what Fashion Week has become, by the way. This is basically like the front two rows of a show. And as you can tell, every single person is taking a picture. So it's the, the role of the backstage photographer is, is, is sort of changing. Here's a flashback picture. There, there's another one. Also, the, the, it's weird with, with people's phones, like where they keep their phone, how they hold their phone. You know, we're all, we all do it and we're all kind of victim of it. But also looking at like the phone as sort of a fashion accessory is also something I'm kind of curious about. People always ask me about this one, so I, I should just explain that this was an event fashion show where like they had live spray paint things and they were spray painting the models and all this stuff. So when you walked in, you were given one of these paint suits. Okay, um, quick story on this. So whenever celebs go to shows, they're always the last one there. This is at the Balenciaga show, and when you came in, there was this long corridor, it made a turn, and then there's the show. And at this show, Lady Gaga was supposed to be there, which was like this kind of huge deal. So all the photographers are waiting by her seat, which is right in the front row in the show. And the question was, I mean, the, the point was, they're all waiting by her seat because people didn't want to wait by the entrance in case she came in through like a secret Lady Gaga only entrance. So they just wait by the seat. Okay, makes sense? Because they got to get a picture of her. But what am I doing? I can't stay there. I just, I start to go crazy when that happens because I start to think, if I wait here, I'm going to just get a picture of her in her seat just like everyone else is going to get. And it's going to be boring and what's the freaking point? So I go all the way down by the entrance and I just say, all right, I'm going to take my chances on the entrance, like the entrance to like the building. And also, I've been in this hallway and I love this hallway. This hallway is amazing. You could photograph anyone walking down that hallway and they would look amazing. So I'm the only photographer down there. And what happens? Kim and Kanye show up. So, I mean whether you care about them or not, in, in the whole sort of Fashion Week thing, they're, I mean, Lady Gaga is rare, but Kim and Kanye are just like, you know, they're, they're, they're such a spectacle. I guess that's the other thing I like. I like this idea of like the spectacle. Well, here comes the biggest spectacle, and it's literally like me and them, private photo shoot coming down this hallway. So this picture is really, you, you can see there was one guy in the back, you see that guy holding his camera up? He was too late because he, he saw them come in and he started chasing them. But I was the only guy waiting. I thought it was going to be Lady Gaga, but it ended up being Kim and Kanye. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that, like, for me, I, 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 if, you know, taking pictures is this very instinctual thing where you just have to trust yourself. And it is the hardest decision to make in photography. Where do you stand to take a picture? And it's something like this, there's all this anticipation, there's all these other photographers and everyone's just chit-chatting, you know, when's she going to get here and blah, 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 and I didn't get that shot. And like, you got to just, that doesn't matter. That does not matter. And it's at moments like that when I just feel like there is an opportunity to be had. And this is the type of thing that happens when you just take a chance and go for it. And even Kanye retweeted this picture. Of course, he didn't say photo by Landon Orderman. He just retweeted it. But anyway, it was just one of those moments that, that happens. All right. This one, which you guys um, used for the, for the uh, flyer, this was just a, a show that was, they decided to like paint this whole room yellow. So again, I'm there early. These are the like guys that help you find your seat and they're having a little meeting. More phone stuff. That's in that same room. This is kind of what it looks like when you're taking pictures at Fashion Week. This is in here just to show you guys what it's like when you're backstage. And you see all these guys that have these funny looking things on the top of their cameras? These are like homemade 
flash contraptions that are supposed to make models' faces look more beautiful. And when they're holding those things up, it's like, it's like people have beach balls. It's like, it, 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 it's crazy. This is just natural light. This is going and coming from a show. This is after the Chanel show. This is Couture Week. Flashback Friday. This is Flashback Friday. Um, this is another instance where, where the picture was after the show. This is from um, this Prada show that was very super tight, very restricted. You had to only be in this one place and all these security guards. And as soon as the show ended, it just became this huge cocktail party. And I swear to you, I'm like the only person who thinks, okay, so now we can take pictures. And you go around and people are all dressed up. They're, you know, drinking champagne. To me, that's like an opportunity to take pictures. Then I got asked to do Men's Fashion Week. I, I think the other thing I love about it is that you're in these environments where there is already like one element for the picture. One thing that I like to think about a lot um, when making pictures is that it, you kind of build a picture you guys ever think about this? It's like you have your kind of background and then you wait for something to happen in front of it. That happens a lot in Fashion Week. This is a perfect example of like this pink room and this guy is going to pick up his bag. Or like that place with the yellow room. It's like, all right, well, we've got the yellow room. That's a start. Let's see what happens in front of it. I feel like that's something that maybe people don't talk about that like that's how pictures happen. It's not like you see it all at once. You see one thing and then you wait for the other thing. You guys ever do that? Flashback Friday. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting thing that it was supposed to be a presentation, which means that there's no show, the models just stand there, which like usually when I see that, I think, well, that's probably not gonna be that interesting. But it was because they had all these tennis balls and anyway. The show's about to start and I'm, I'm the guy taking pictures of the floor. Here's another example of what it's like during, during Fashion Week. Here's a guy cleaning the runway before the show. This is figuring out which way to go. So when you come out, you go left, and then wait, left, left? Oh no, it's two rights. I mean, I love these kind of moments because these are real moments within this big you know, production and all this stuff, but it's just people trying to figure out like, okay, do you go right or left? People meeting each other before shows. This is, um, this is Dior. It's not actually Valentino, it's a guy who kind of looks like him. And what I love here is you see the way the invitation is just like poking into her skin? Sometimes it's like this little detail that we kind of hold on to that, that you know, maybe makes a picture work or not. For me, I'm just getting the, the pink and the, the hug, but that little moment there is kind of what I like about that one. This is before um, Dior, and to me it kind of looks like the statue is sort of also like on the phone, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is at the Louvre in Paris, by the way. This is after the Dior show. All 
Okay, this is a this is a good one. Um, one of my favorite things that I that I always remember about photography that uh, one of my photo editors said when I worked at a newspaper, Alex Burroughs, he always used to say, if a duck's all you have, then a duck's what you use. And what he meant was basically like you just, you can only use what, what you got. And in my case, I'm stubborn that way, I only have a 35 millimeter lens. So this is the Hermes show. And they don't let you hang around with the people before, they don't let you hang around after it is super super strict you're basically going through a completely different entrance and in this case we were actually in a different room from the people who are watching the show you see that right that that little door opened like we didn't even know where we were we're all the photographers and usually i'm not even on the the riser anyway because i'm like no no no, I'm, I'm backstage they're like no there's no backstage so i'm the last guy to get there and what is like kind of around this area is like all this Hermes stuff and there's this huge ladder, like a 20 foot ladder, like the biggest ladder you've ever seen. It's the biggest ladder I've ever been on. But I picked it up, <laughs> put it in the back of the photographers and climbed up it. And that's where I got this kind of unique perspective. Again, only with the 35 millimeter and I shot the whole show like this. And so it's just a question of kind of like, all right, that's the composition, and I'm, and I'm just waiting for like the right gesture. And this model, and you know, with the shaved head and her foot, that's just why this one became the one. But the point is, a duck was all I had, so a duck is what I used. Make sense? And, and I got a ladder too, that was, the, that was the bonus. These women are wearing the same thing when they went to a fashion show. Going to a fashion show is kind of like going to a football game. It's like if you're a Jets fan, you put on your Jets jersey, you go, to the, you go to the game, you sit around with other people who are also wearing Jets jerseys, and you cheer for your team. <laughs> when it's a fashion show, if it's an Altazura show, you put on your Altazura dress, you sit next to other people who are also wearing Altazura, and then you look at Altazura dresses. <laughs> it's really true. This is after Chanel. They made it look like an airport. So again, it's like the, these sets are just so, so interesting. There's a guy on the phone at, at Chanel. Could just be a guy on the phone at an airport. OK, here's, here's one thing. See this guy right here? You guys should never be that guy, OK? <laughs> You see all these people taking pictures? Everyone's photographing this model. This is like outside in the street somewhere. Look at this guy. What's this guy doing? He is looking at the back of his camera and he's so pleased with himself. Don't be that guy. You can do that all night long. Like once you're, once you're at home, you can look at your pictures, but don't do it while you're shooting. That's the only thing about digital that's really tough. I don't know if you guys talk about that. But it's like you get that instant gratification. You want to look down, and you're, you're missing what's in front of you. That was the nice thing about working with film. And I think it's why I get so kind of um, crazy when I'm photographing, is because I learned on film. So I try not to look at the back of the camera. It's like you just can't believe that, oh, I got it already. Like You can't think that way. You just need to keep looking. OK, one more thing. Okay, so this picture is backstage at Montclair, and actually it was on the front page of the New York Times, if you can believe that. I've never had my picture on the front page of the New York Times. It was below the fold, but it was on the front page of the New York Times, okay? Pretty cool, right? Fashion Week, front page of the New York Times. So I thought it might be interesting to just show you guys one thing. Okay, uh, one time when I was, when I was an intern, I got to see like 300 rolls of Alex Webb's pictures, one frame after, the, after another. You guys know Alex Webb's work? It's amazing. And it was the first time that I understood the concept of working it or working a situation. And what I was amazed to see is that basically Alex would see something and he would photograph it kind of over and over again from a little different perspective, wait for things to happen. And eventually, he kind of comes up with these compositions where everything is just in the perfect place. But the point is, 
what I saw with my own eyes was that he was there for, I mean, I don't know how long, an hour or five minutes or two hours. It's like I saw, because I saw every single picture he took, that he saw something and he worked it and waited and, and watched. And this is just like, it was such an eye opener for me. I didn't realize that's how you take pictures. I feel like there's this kind of conception out there in the world that you kind of walk around and see something great and take a picture of it and then you walk around and see something else and take a picture of it. I can't do that. I think the only person who does that is Eggleston. You ever seen that, that video on Eggleston? I mean, that's amazing to me. He walks around, he takes one shot and that's it. I can't do that. I am of the school and the thought that you work it. You work it for as long as you can work it and then you keep working it and then you keep working it, and then you keep working it until you can't work it anymore. Sometimes it works out and becomes a picture, sometimes it becomes nothing. Okay, so this one ended up on the front page of the New York Times. So I, I don't mean this in like a, hey, I got the front page of the New York Times. I mean, I, I'm shocked. I was as shocked to see this on the front page as I was, but I'm just trying to explain like kind of how that picture developed. And at the beginning it looked like what? Nothing. And I feel like that's, how, that's the way that pictures happen a lot. Okay. Thank you, guys. Well, we have time for some uh, Q&A. If you have any questions, I'm going to ask you to use the mic, which does not amplify your voice. Excuse me. Landon, thanks for sharing. Uh, I'm a fan, for sure. Um, I was wondering, though, I can kind of, without knowing you, I can kind of see your personality in your work, which is something I really admire, but I'm curious if you have any personal projects that you're working on. Personal projects, okay. I, 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 lo I love this question um, because, honestly, I feel like all my work is personal. Now, that might be kind of a, you know, spiteful answer, but for me, it's true. I mean, I, I, I love this stuff. And... Um, I guess the point is, is that like um, one thing I think that, that I learned early on is when you're doing assignment work, it doesn't always mean that you're just trying to please a client. You got to please yourself. And uh, this is something that I think in the end, if you do please yourself, you will please the client. You know what I mean? So um, I understand sometimes, you know, editors have in their head a picture that they want or you need to fulfill the assignment. When I'm working for the New York Times, I need to cover a lot of stuff. But I know when I find those little moments backstage that just I respond to. I mean, that's the picture that's on the front page. So it's kind of like, I don't know, what, what, what do you do? I think, I think the point is, is that like, you have to make it all personal. Another thing that I, that I really think is important that a professor once told me was that whatever the subject is or whatever the, the project is, you have to find a reason to care. And if you don't care, then you're going to kind of put off that vibe and you're not going to be let in and you're not going to, you're not going to get what you want. So you need to, it's almost like you develop that skill of caring about whatever it is you're working on. And if you think about it that way, then of course it's personal. It's a good question though. Uh, same here. Thank you for sharing your work. It is beautiful. Um, along your journey as a fashion photographer or fashion documenter, have you ever been uh, around the lines of being compared to Bill Cunningham? Um, I don't know if I've actually ever been compared to Bill Cunningham, but I, I, I mean, I, I love Bill Cunningham, and I totally uh, think he's marvelous, as he might say. <laughs> Um, and it's really interesting, actually, to see Bill Cunningham work. And when you're at Fashion Week, Bill Cunningham is out there doing his thing. And it's kind of amazing because there are so many photographers now, and he's really like the kind of the original guy. Um, and as sweet of a guy as he is, when he's in photographer mode, he, he's got sharp elbows, is what I like to say. But yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. Landon, this is like a two-part question about your positioning. I al you almost look like you are detached 
from the crowd of photographers somehow mm -hmm. how do mm -hmm. you achieve that and the other thing is that a lot of the times you seem to be almost kneeling behind people very close <laughs> like like a foot away don't you get like kicked out sometimes or <laughs> <laughs> how do you manage to be close to celebrities and be photographing their intimacy almost mm -hmm. with a flash mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay with great Right, right, right. No, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, okay, the first thing, let's talk about the first thing, kind of staying away from the crowd. I think one thing is, is the idea of kind of finding your, your background. So like even that New York Times picture that I'm sort of seeing, there, there could be more guys behind me, but I'm getting as close as I can to just know, here's my frame. And then that one guy kind of came into it, but it didn't even matter. Um, so I think that's one thing is that like I'm I'm I, I think I work a lot where I'm kind of like looking for the f where the frame is and then the action happens inside of it and that's what gives that kind of illusion of he's totally on his own. It just means that I've found a frame on my own. It could be a frame looking straight down or a frame looking up. And the other thing that as you get closer that frame kind of fills up more and more. I think that's the other thing. You know, like with a 35 millimeter lens, it's kind of wide, but if I'm just not happy with it being so wide, I just get as close as I can until like what I have is in the frame. Um, and then as far as getting close to people, I mean, honestly, only one time in this whole Fashion Week thing did one guy once like kind of ye like yell at me, being like, what are you doing getting so close to me? Only one time. And it's because it's this whole environment of like celebration and let's be photographed and I put on all this stuff and like y you just kind of, actually two times, Anna Wintour one, one, once said to me, get back, because I was getting a little too close to her, but she's like the queen of it all. Um, but I mean, when, when I go in there, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling and I'm, I, I'm not trying to be threatening. Um, and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, which I think comes across. And so hopefully they understand that like I'm trying to share in that moment that they're having and, and they let me be there. As far as like creeping up behind people and stuff like that, yeah, sometimes it gets a little like, what are you doing? But I don't care. You just, you know, I just, I don't care. I'm going, I'm going after a picture. That answer your question? Sure. Yeah. And if I can do a yeah. And, and this is more technical. Are you always holding the flash yourself? And it looks like a large flash. It's, it's actually, it's just a Canon speed light. And I'm, 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 I'm usually holding it myself. There's like one picture in there where I put it on like a desk or something. Because it's, it's wireless. But I'm holding it and I'm just kind of experimenting with it. I'm really sort of playful with it. I'll try it down here. If it's not working, I'll bring it up here. And then the one time with the, um, with the assistant holding a second one. OK, just before we wrap it up, um, you made something for our students. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to ask our students to share, because we don't have quite enough copies. Oh, right, it's on both sides? It's on both sides. OK, guys. These are some awesome quotes that like, were on my wall during grad school. Should I read them first? To be a photographer, one must photograph. No amount of book learning, no checklist of seminars attended can substitute for the simple act of making pictures. Experience is the best teacher of all. And for that, there is no guarantee that one will become an artist, only the journey matters. That's Harry Callahan. I love that. The exception might be you've attended this seminar, so you got you got a head start. OK, and this one, which I, I also love. Um, Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no man could have dreamed would have come his way. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now.
Okay, I love those. It just means go out there and do it, you guys, because you can.